Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to England once again and we're going to have a look at yet another of the beers that was very kindly sent to me by my good friend Adam over at Mersey Beer. So Adam is just getting his channel kind of up and running. His main focus is going to be on beer themed live streams and stuff like this. He's got some really nice ideas ready to go for that and it's going to be very interesting to see how his channel evolves over the next little while and hopefully I can play a part in some of those live uh, videos and things like that. That's going to be really fun. But yeah, do make sure you go and show him some love. Click on that link in the description below and give him a subscribe and get his channel off the ground. It's going to be really cool. As I say, a very nice guy who really knows his beer to boot. But um, a little while ago, Adam sent me a big box of about 20 or so different English beers with one or two Welsh ones in there as well. So this English mini-series is thanks to him, so again, big shout out to Adam for that. And uh, as part of that box, he sent me a good few beers from his very local breweries in Liverpool. I've not had too many Liverpudlian beers actually. I think the only ones were a couple of beers that I had from Mad Hatter, who now unfortunately have, uh, have gone bust actually. They had some really interesting high alcohol, quite funky beers actually, but they're, uh, they're no more unfortunately. Um, but for this review, we're going to have a look at one of those Liverpool breweries and this is another one that I've never had anything from before actually. So for this one then we are going to go to the Baltic Triangle area of Liverpool which is in the kind of southern part of the city, kind of southwest I guess you could say, right on the water almost and we're going to have a look at my first beer from Black Lodge Brewery. So this particular beer is called South Down Baxter Street. It comes in at 6.2% ABV and they're describing this one as a West Coast IPA. So really curious to see how this one turns out. I do love a good West Coast IPA as I've been telling you on the channel incessantly recently but um, yeah very curious to see how this one turns out. Definitely nice to have another brewery on the channel from Liverpool and it seems to be that the beer scene there is thriving at the moment. Um, Liverpool from what I remember we had we only ever got Mad Hatter from there in Scotland actually and it was almost a little bit of a beer dead zone for quite a while actually but it really seems to have taken off in recent times actually and you will see me featuring a few other breweries from the Liverpool area over the next little while actually but hopefully this is a nice beer it seems like a very nice way to introduce Black Lodge Brewery for you here on the channel and I hope that you guys watching enjoy this one as well actually and as I say huge thank you to Adam for making this review possible so um, yeah let's see how we get on with this one then as always with my reviews I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Black Lodge Brewery. You will see one quite soon because there were two of their beers in the box and maybe we can do a few more beyond that, we'll need to see. But there's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist to beers from different countries. There is one there for all the English beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to fairly regularly over the next little while, thanks to Adam, and hopefully we can keep that up over the coming weeks and months and things like that. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Black Lodge Brewery then, on to my brewery notes. So Black Lodge Lodge Brewery were officially founded back in the summer of 2015 by Paul Seyfert who has a background in taxation. He also established the Liverpool Craft Beer Company and the Craft Beer Exo and he's involved at Love Lane, another very well known Liverpudley and Craft Brewery, so he is founder number one. Founder number two is Rob Tufnell, who owns the Clove Hitch restaurant and also the 23 Club. Uh, and there's also Rob Etherington in there as well, who serves as the Brewery Operations Director, and he currently is the most active of the three owners in the company. Um, but the brewery itself can be found in the Baltic Triangle area, as I told you, in the southwest of the city, almost right on the water. This is a former industrial area, which has now become a little bit of a kind of creative hub, if you like. There's a lot of startup companies companies in there, a lot of kind of boutique restaurants and stuff like that, a few little breweries and stuff from what I understand. So it's one of these kind of areas, these former industrial areas that's kind of um, become a little bit of a hipster district almost from what I understand. So um, yeah, you find these all over the place now, the Archies in Manchester and all of this kind of thing. There's lots of places uh, throughout England 
that are quite like that actually. Um, but they apparently moved to a new site in 2019 at the King's Docks and they now have an on-site tap room there as well which looks very swanky if you look at the um, if you look at the pictures of it and things like that, they've got about, I think it was about 20 or so different beers they had on tap or something like that. They had quite a vast selection of their own beers on tap there and the tap room itself opens from Thursday to Sunday, usually from late afternoon through to, um, you know, slightly later evening actually. So, um, yeah, it opens Thursday to Sunday. You can go and check it out. These guys have also been very prolific as well. As of September 2020, when I'm filming this review for you, they've apparently produced 320 different kinds of beer according to untapped which is pretty impressive when you consider that these guys have only been going since about 2015 that works out at about 60 uh, beers each year to be honest so that's uh, you know that is is pretty crazy actually 60 beers it's more than one beer a week that is pretty damn impressive you have to admit but um, yeah these guys are also they're also the owners of the octopus restaurant which is behind the the blind school on Hardman Street in the Knowledge Quarter of Liverpool and you can also get a good number of the Black Lodge beers in there from what I understand actually and it looks like a quite posh kind of upscale restaurant actually that was founded in collaboration with um, with a chef actually and he is also one of the uh, the kind of associate directors on the board of Black Lodge Brewery now as well actually so um, yeah that's all I can really tell you for the moment about Black Lodge Brewery that was all the information I was really able to find on these guys actually but um, yeah I think that kind of gives you um, a good bit of background of what these guys have been up to. Um, quite a few of them, you know, one of them um, really involved in the business side of things and then got involved in the restaurant business and the craft beer things and stuff like that. So yeah, the, the guys behind this company really do have a good background when it comes to starting a brewery. But yeah, like I said, if you want to learn more about the brewery, you can check out the brewery website, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn more about all the different beers that they've done. 320, like I say, is pretty damn impressive for five years of existence. So um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a look at this beer itself then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork then. This one, it seems, you know, fairly similar. A lot of the breweries that are doing IPAs and stuff like that, they've got these 440 milliliter cans and this sort of shape type artwork to it, you know, the kind of abstract shapes. You know, I'm not even sure, I'm kind of artistically illiterate to be honest. I was always more into music and things. But in fairness, I do love the the metal uh, the metal band um, artwork and things like that that you get. I love the the album covers on a lot of the heavy metal stuff. You get beautiful artwork on those. But yeah, these are a little bit more kind of uh, abstract and things like that. So I was never a great fan of abstract art. Uh, to be honest with you, but there you can see on the side there there is the Black Lodge symbol there. It looks a little bit like a digital clock almost. It does look a little bit like that. Um, but they actually have quite a lot of detail about this beer on the side. And I would hazard a guess, I'm guessing at the moment, with this beer being with me here in South Sweden, this may well be one of the, the, the best travelled uh, cans of Black Lodge beer so far actually. But the interesting thing is for a brewery that I gather are still you know, fairly small in comparison to some of the other ones in England. It's actually got a hell of a lot of different languages on the side here. So it's got Danish, uh, Swedish, Norwegian, Finnish, German, um, French, I think that's Dutch actually as well, and then it's also got Spanish on there too. So um, yeah, it's interesting that they've got so many different uh, you know, they've got different things on there, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, yeah, I like that. But, yeah, it's nicely presented, this one. It is quite similar to a number of other breweries that do this kind of artwork there. But, yeah, it tells you the hop profile and stuff like that there. Um, but it says... Um, it says on the side here, the hops in this one are Columbus, Amarillo and Simcoe, so I'm guessing Columbus will be the early edition hop, that'll be the one that's giving you all your bitterness and stuff like that. Then the malt base in this one is Maris Otter, Malted Wheat, Golden Oats, Pilsner and Crystal Malt. So this one should be pretty nice actually. Like I said, a 6.2% West Coast IPA this one, the South Down at Baxter Street. 440ml can this one, courtesy of Adam at uh, Mercy Beer's channel. So like I say, make sure you check out the link to his channel in the video description below. But let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste and then 6.2% West Coast IPA <coughs> from the Baltic Triangle area in Liverpool in England. Let's get this guy out and see how we go. I love a good West Coast IPA and I'm guessing that'll be why Adam has picked this one out for me. Um, I do have a double IPA from these guys but I can't remember whether that is a New Englander 
are exactly what it is. But like I said, these guys are a very well respected brewery around Liverpool these days, so it's definitely cool to be able to feature them here for you uh, on the channel actually. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this beer, it looks a lot hazier when you don't pass the light through at this one. If you look at it on the camera, this beer actually looks a hell of a lot more hazy than it is and it's not just the condensation around the edge of the glass but this beer has a lovely kind of deep orangey amber colour to it actually it's not a million miles away from this orangey kind of colour on the can actually but you can see that this beer's poured with about a somewhere between a quarter and a third finger of head that's fading away to be a very thin foamy layer I would describe that as quite a bumpy head as well there's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but quite a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head and as I say that's fading away just to be a very very thin foamy layer if I put my fingers behind the glass you're going to see this beer is quite hazy but if you put the light through that you will see it is a slightly you know, less opaque, west coasty type haze that you're getting out of this beer. It definitely looks a lot hazier uh, to the naked eye almost than it does if you fire the light through it. So, um, yeah, but definitely looks like a nice beer, this one. It's kind of typical of what you would expect um, from an IPA these days. It does look a little bit more New Englandy than some of the other west coast IPAs that I've had. So I'm quite curious to see whether this one is going to be one of these modern takes on the west coast IPA that's got a little bit more wheat in it. Obviously this one does have wheat in it but I wonder if it will be a little bit uh, lower on the bitterness and things like that. But when it's got Columbus in it, I am hopeful because Columbus has that lovely kind of spicy note. Amarillo as we know has a lovely big oily orangey character and um, Simcoe is usually quite a passion fruity hop in my mind. It's got a lovely big oily passion fruit when you use it in the West Coast malt bases. If you put it in the New Englands, it's distinctly more kind of soft. And if you put it in black IPAs as well, it gives you some lovely red fruity character. Um, Simcoe is a really, really interesting hop in that way that really it's a little bit, um, can we say, Jekyll and Hyde, depending on what. Um, malt base you put it in with but um, yeah this one's got a good hot bill in it so fingers crossed this one does have a good little bit of bitterness to it but let's check out the aroma first and then we'll have a taste of it ah yeah no that smells quite interesting the malt base on this one um, it does have a wee bit, it has a bit of that English kind of grainy character to it, to be honest with you. That's interesting. So yeah, straight away with this beer, you're going to notice that big kind of brown bready base. This one, like I said, it has Maris Otter. Maris Otter's a lovely malt, actually. I really do like Maris Otter. Crystal and Turo are always very nice when it comes to the, um, the, the West Coast the IPAs. But this one, to me, just on first kind of smell, it is a distinctly English malt base that this one has. It almost has a little bit of an English kind of bitter character to it actually. And as I've told you on the channel before, I actually don't like, that's one of the few styles of beer that I've just never really taken to, to be honest, is the English bitter. For me, the English beers, it's all about the stouts and the porters. Some of the brown ales can be very nice as well, in fairness though. Um, but yeah, you do get a little bit of an English kind of um, bittery. I, I get a bit of a, there's a really quite grainy quality to this beer in terms of its... Uh, in terms of its malt base. But we'll see, it could be something to do with the yeast that they've used as well, because you do get some of these woody, kind of herbally type notes from some of the, the New England yeast, the Vermont yeasts and stuff like that. So it may well just be a yeasty quality that doesn't come up so much in the flavour. But on first impression, the, the aroma of this one is distinctly, it has a, a good bit of an English bitter type quality to it for me. So yeah, you do get um, you get a kind of grainy, bread crusty type base to this one. On top of that, you're getting a bit more of a kind of almost fluffy brown bread. It's, I, I hesitate to say it's rye because it's not quite as sweet almost as rye is. It's definitely a lot more kind of um, grainy, like an English bitter, as I've said. Um, but you do get a good little bit of caramel out of this one. You can smell there's a bit of sweet caramel there right in the centre of the nose. There's a wee bit of that kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity type quality as well. So there is a degree of sweetness to this one, which is what you want from the West Coast IPAs. You do want a little bit of an oily, caramelly, biscuity kind of thing to them. But this one, to me, the bready characters that come out of this, you do get a bit of a smoother brown bready quality uh, coming out of this one. Um, the more that you smell of it, it does, in fairness, kind of settle down a little bit and just smoothen out, which is quite nice. But um, you really get a... You do, it, this one has a hell of a lot of kind of grainy character, a lot more of a kind of bread crusty, brown bready sort of thing, which is really interesting, I have to say. I like how that, I really like how that goes together with this beer. Um, 
the more the, the breadiness that it has and the graininess, it does kind of grow on me a little bit. Um, you know, I was saying about the English bitters not being my kind of um, favourite style of beer. But actually, in strangeness, the best ones that I've had, the best English style bitters I've had have actually been from Swedish breweries because they use the American hops and stuff in them and they're a bit smoother and almost a bit cleaner, they actually. They kind of feel a bit cleaner because of the water and stuff. Um, but yeah, the malt base on this one, it does have the sweetness you'd expect, but it almost, for me, in terms of aroma, it does have a little bit of an almost English bitter type quality to it. So I'm really curious to see how that comes out in the flavour. On the hoppy side of things then, let's focus on that now. Um, on the hoppy side of things, there's a nice little bit of um, floral aromaticity to this one. You do get a little touch of earthiness in there as well. Columbus, from what I can remember, it does give you a good little touch of earthiness but mainly it's quite a big um, floral spicy one but what I will say is from the aroma I think this is going to be a fairly low IBU um, a fairly low IBU West Coast IPA this one I think this is one of the more kind of modern takes on the uh, the West Coast IPA because you don't get the big kind of spicy dank kind of qualities from this one they're a little bit more subtle but there's a nice little bit of a lighter grassy note to the beer and you do have some interesting fruity characters from the, the Amarillo and the uh, the Simcoe coming out. So I think, for me, the oily uh, orangey notes of the Amarillo, they're a little bit more apparent, but behind that you can feel the more oily, kind of um, slightly mango-y, passion fruity kind of notes actually. It's, I'd actually say, I think maybe mango isn't the right descriptor, it's like a slightly stronger passion fruit, almost, um, but it's not quite as bright and as pungent as you get in a New England IPA in fairness. As I say, Simcoe can behave radically differently in different beers with different malt bases and yeasts and stuff. But yeah, you do have a little touch of that slightly darker passion fruity note out of it. And you've got a few kind of, um, you've got a few sort of papaya type notes that come out of the beer as well actually, which is quite interesting. So yeah, I like how... Um, I do like how the, the fruity side of this beer comes out. It's got a nice oiliness, which is what you'd expect of the West Coast IPA. So yeah, in fairness, I would describe this one. It almost comes across as having like an English bitter malt base, but then it's got a bit of the sweetness you expect, some of the oily fruits, and a, and a wee bit of the kind of... It's got a bit of the kind of floral character that you expect out of as well. The green side of the hops, for me though, they definitely lean towards the kind of light and um, grassy side of things. But I really like... Uh, I think this the aroma of this one, the orangey notes, are really appealing to me at the moment. So take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. We're going to have a taste of this one now and see how we get on. So this one is the South Down Baxter Street 6.2% West Coast IPA from Black Lodge Brewery in the Baltic Triangle in the southwest of Liverpool in Merseyside in England. Thank you again to Adam for making this review possible. Let's get stuck in. Slange Skull. Yeah, that's quite interesting actually. It does have a little bit of that almost English bittery type quality to the um, to the malt base. Definitely, I would stick with that. I thought that was that was going to be something just from the yeast and stuff like that, but it does have a bit of that um, kind of grainy quality coming out of it. That's quite interesting. Yeah, this one for me, that's, um, it does actually, it really feels a little bit more like a, it's got, it does have a bit more bitterness than I was expecting in fairness, but it really does strike me as more like an English IPA in a lot of ways. Because um, normally the English IPAs were all, the, the English beer is always a little bit more kind of grainy and things like that, you know, that it, it really has a bit of that English bitter malt base to it. So it's very, it, it is kind of, it really reflects the aroma pretty well, but in terms of calling it a West Coast IPA, I'm not sure if I would agree with that. This, this to me, comes across as more of an English IPA. Um, yeah. I just think with that, I mean, it does have quite a few elements you'd expect. I mean, I dare say that this is a bit more bitter than the, than the English IPAs. But, um, you know, 
I would say that it, it is, there's depth, there's a really distinct, the, the, if we're talking about West Coast American IPAs, I mean, um, this one isn't, it doesn't strike me as being particularly resemblant to that, that sort of substyle, to be honest. It is more like an English IPA with American hops in it. That's definitely what I would say about this. The American IPA kind of evolved quite differently. It's a lot smoother. Some of them can be a little bit, usually they're just a lot more oily and brown sugary. This this has a really more distinctive kind of grainy type quality to it. It's, and that's what you'd expect, as I say, of an English bitter or an English golden ale or an English IPA, something like that. So it's almost like a kind of hybrid beer, this. It's got a bit, it's got an English bitter type malt base to it in the centre of your palate. It has got a bit of the the, the caramel and stuff that you would expect though, but then it's got an American hop, so I think this is, it's more accurate for me to describe this beer as an American hopped English IPA, I think that's kind of fair to be honest. Yeah, I would kind of, I would definitely kind of stick with that. Actually, it really does come across as distinctly more English. And I mean, in fairness, when we look at the malt bill in this, Maris Otter, Malted Wheat, Golden Oats, Pilsner and Crystal, I do think, just going from that base, um, I think some of this will be coming from the yeast as well, actually. So maybe maybe they've used like an old English um, yeast strain or something like that. Um, it's... Um, is this an interesting point to make about this? Because from that malt base in there, you wouldn't expect it to be quite as grainy as it is. You would expect it to be a bit smoother. I mean, Maris Otter does have, from memory, a slightly lingering kind of graininess to it. But it's also very smooth and it's very biscuity. And you don't get so much of that out of this one. This beer, it really does move more towards a kind of um, a sort of grainy type thing, actually. So yeah, I'm surprised. I'm a bit surprised about that, to be honest. It is. It is definitely more like an English um, bitter malt base in here with American hops on top of it. That's how this beer really strikes me. And going from the malt, uh, going from the malt base on this one, I would suspect that part of the greeniness you're getting out of this beer is to do with the yeast. So yeah, this this one's quite a quirky beer. I definitely say that. Let's try and describe the flavour a little bit more then. So I mean, straight away across the middle of your palate, you you can feel that kind of grainy uh, malt base to the beer. If you go towards the back third of your tongue, it's definitely more pronounced, and the grains come across as almost a little bit toasty. But it has a real bit of bitterness on that back third of the palate from these kind of um, grainy notes. Actually, and I, I do suspect some of that is from. The, is, is from the yeast and um, it almost gets to the point where it feels like a little bit it almost feels like like a very kind of well fired bread crust almost it's really got that kind of level of bitterness to it but yeah on top of that you do get a little bit of a kind of brown bready type layer like I was saying from the aroma it's nowhere near kind of sweet enough and smooth enough to be like a a type of rye bread uh, type thing. It is a little bit more like a kind of wholemeal thing. So in the middle third of your palate, you'll feel the back third of your palate definitely feels a bit thicker. So you've got the toasty grainy notes underneath, a bit of a thicker brown bready note there. But as you go forward into the middle third of your palate, you can feel the thickness drops a little bit. And you've got a nice bit of smoothness there. And in the very centre of your palate, you've got a nice bit of a very sweet uh, there is a, a nice little bit of a very kind of sweet caramel in there, but as you move further out from the middle of your palate and go um, across to the edges of that middle third of your tongue, it's distinctly more kind of um, biscuity, like McVitie's digestive biscuits and things. So yeah, I would definitely say that. Yeah, I like. I really like how this. Um, how this goes together in that sense. It's got a really nice little bit of sweetness to it. The sweeter side of this beer, it's, no, it's not quite as oily, it's just, it's almost like a kind of wet sweetness if you like, but really, yeah, the, I find the malt base in this one very kind of grainy and bready and stuff like that. And normally with a West Coast IPA, you would expect it to be considerably smoother and for the sweetness to dominate a little bit more. You would expect that out of the West Coast IPA. So, I don't know, it's, it, it, this beer it really strikes me as more of a kind of modern take on the English IPA rather than anything else. So West Coast IPA, I don't know, I mean, it, it, I mean, 
it could be one of these things, like it might be a little bit of a gimmick almost, you know, Stieg Berriots here in, in Sweden, they call their, they have a beer called West Coast IPA because they're on the west coast of Sweden. Could this be because it's on the west coast of England almost? I don't know. Um, but it really, this is, de it's more of an English IPA. I'm 100% I'm sure about that. I would say this is more of an English IPA because it, it just doesn't have the smoothness to be a west coast American. It doesn't have the smoothness and it doesn't quite have the oiliness to be like that. It is almost like an English bitter malt base and then American hops on top of that. I think that's it's definitely fair to say that about this beer. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you do have a little bit of earthiness there and that will be from the Columbus. As you move further forward along the sides of the palate, you do get more of that kind of floral, spicy note that you would expect of the Columbus coming out of this beer, which is, is quite interesting. I mean, that builds a good bridge between the more grainy characteristics that this beer has. So yeah, I would say that um, this beer, it does have a fair little bit of bitterness to it, more than some of the New England ones. But um, I think it's definitely, that builds a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste and you get some of the kind of grainy notes in the middle of the palate as well, which is quite interesting. But yeah, as you move further along sides of the palate, yeah, that bitterness does build and like I said, the bitterness builds into the aftertaste. As you reach the front corners of the palate, it does have a good little bit of a distinctive bitterness to it. Then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and more uh, grassy in my mind. Then behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And that comes across really, uh, really quite nicely actually. Um, so yeah, the green side of the hops for me, it does have quite a bit of a floral spicy note. The Columbus is quite distinctive in this one. It's quite obvious when you try this beer, that's the early edition hop. Uh, but yeah, the fruity side of this beer, it's more wet than oily actually. It came across as a bit more oily in the aroma. So yeah, on the fruity side of things with this one, if you go towards the back of that front third of your tongue, it's definitely got a little bit of a kind of uh, darker passion fruity note there. That's the Simcoe coming out. And that, in fairness, does sweeten up a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste. And as you move towards the front uh, part of that front third of your tongue, it's distinctively more um, oily and, uh, and tangy, uh, yeah, definitely more oily and, and orangey actually. The Amarillo starts to show its face a little bit more and I think the Amarillo kind of lingers a little bit into the aftertaste with this one but you've got some of that big spicy note from the, you definitely have a bit of that kind of big spicy note from the the uh, the Columbus sitting there, a bit of the earthiness and a bit of the graininess as well actually. So I really like how that side of the beer uh, goes together to be honest with you that one it fits together very very nicely actually so um yeah um the flavor profile of this beer like i say i would still stick with that that this is it's like an english bitter malt base or an english ipa malt base and then you've got american hops on top of it i'd be very curious to know about the yeast because i think the yeast is contributing a lot to the grainy nature of this beer um, because yeah with the malt base and stuff that's in this you would expect it to be a little bit smoother and just a little bit sweeter but this beer really does lean towards the kind of grainy end of the spectrum for me so I'm, I'm curious about that I am curious about that um, but yeah in terms of the um, in this one it strikes me as it's, if it's almost like a kind of English cask type IPA that's maybe what they were kind of going for with this one but a west coast IPA I don't know if I would market it as that because, you know, West Coast Americans smoother, slightly sweeter and more oily than this actually. Um, but yeah, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say... Yeah, it's kind of bottom end and mid-bodied. The carbonation is quite smooth in this one. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Took a little bit of that down the wrong way. Um, but yeah, it's got a little bit of wetness to it. Bit of smoothness, yes, yeah, so I'd say, yeah, bottom end and mid-bodied for me. The carbonation is very smooth. Um, and I'd say the malt base is quite grainy and it, it does, in fairness, it does smoothen out a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste. You do get a wee touch of sweetness out of it, but yeah, it really is quite a grainy, bittery type malt base, to be honest with you. Good little bit of hoppy bitterness, I think maybe about 50-ish, maybe 60 IBUs out of this one. In fairness, but I think some of that is coming from the, the grainy side of the beer and you've got a little bit of a wet kind of fruity character from this one. There's a wee bit of sweetness in the malt base too, but yeah, this is quite a 
a kind of grainy leaning uh, beer for me but you do get I think the graininess and the bitterness and the hoppy bitterness have a little bit of an antagonistic effect they're kind of playing against each other almost so um, yeah this was a really interesting one to review this is one that really kind of made me think a little bit because of the, the sort of English IPA characteristics it has but um, yeah it's, it's cool to review something like this that is a little bit different this one really strikes me as if it's a kind of it almost strikes me as a sort of transition beer from getting like traditional English drinkers that like the relays and stuff into a more American style of beer. That's what this beer really kind of strikes me as an attempt at. Uh, I think this is the the sort of thing you know, we say. Oh, do you want to try in a more American IPA? This is the kind of thing that you would give to you know sort of traditional English bitter drinkers and stuff to try and build their palate a little bit. That's what this beer really strikes me as to be honest I think that's where it would go to good use but um, yeah an interesting introduction to Black Lodge Brewery as I said I've got a double IPA from these guys in the fridge that I'll uh, probably review quite soon but then post a little bit later um, but uh, yeah I'm curious to see what that one has in store I'm not sure if that is more of a kind of New England type IPA but I know it's a double IPA I think it's about 8% or so but um, yeah, this has been a really interesting introduction to Black Lodge Brewery. Thank you to Adam once again for making this review possible. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing more from these guys. Maybe we can try a lager or something from the dark end of the spectrum from these guys fairly soon. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Black Lodge Brewery. Do let me know what other ones I should try from these guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully I can try a stout or something like that from these guys too. Make sure you go and show Adam over at Mersey Beer some love. Check out the link to his channel in the description below. But this has been a really interesting beer to review. The um, South Down Baxter Street, a 6.2% IPA of some description. I think more of an English style IPA than a West Coast as they advertise it. But an interesting beer this one. And it's been interesting to make this review for you. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed it. Let's leave it at that for this one then. Thanks again for watching. And until the next time, Slanju, Skull, cheers. Make sure you check out Black Lodge Brewery from the Baltic Triangle in Liverpool in Merseyside, England. Cheers.